We've gone through the domestic agenda a little bit and ask you about where government intervention in this economy stops. The government has a controlling stake in two auto companies, major stakes in the banks, an $800 billion stimulus, new regulatory powers that you're considering, uh, regulation over how executives uh, should be compensated. Now, big proposals on health care and energy. When is it too much? Let me tell you. Let me ask it another way, if I can turn the question around. How, do you, how does anybody think we could possibly lead in the 21st century without a fundamental change in our energy policy, a fundamental change in our health care policy, and taking control of the reckless, reckless lack of oversight that existed? We just had a meeting at the G20. We just had a meeting of the world. The world's in recession. What is the one thing they all agreed on? every country that we participate in. We need to have some fiscal response. We, we need to have some control over the system that so it can't run wild. But what achievements can you point to through all of this government regulation and government intervention that you've achieved? David, well, we've achieved not losing about a million jobs by not letting the two automobile companies be liquidated. Oh, I love these folks who go out there and say, why'd you get involved? We got involved because the liquidation of these companies, which was the alternative, would have been immediately the next day 100,000 jobs lost. Then all the suppliers go bankrupt, and the estimates are of a million people right. unemployed. Okay, so what's the exit strategy? The exit strategy is these, now that these car companies, for example... Not just the car companies, okay, though, well, a I mean, broad swath of well, government intervention. <laughs> the exit strategy is that we, in fact, these companies where the United States government, through the TARP funding, has got engaged in helping them stay alive, is that they begin, they are retooled, they are beginning to make money, we get the, hell, the heck out as quickly as we can. As the president says, we don't want any part. Do you think the, you think the taxpayers are ever going to see money again that we have been poured into AIG or GM? Yes. Will they see all the money is a different question. Yes, they will see money again. I want to return to a couple and of other... And by the way, had we not done this, they'd all be in deep, deep, deep trouble. Let all the banks fail, where would we have been? I love these folks who say we shouldn't have done anything. At the time, I didn't hear anybody saying that. But it's still a major question as to whether the government can effectively run these companies. Well, we're not trying to run the companies. We've turned off the daily operation of these companies to the boards of directors of these companies. Right. We're you don't think there's going to be any meddling by the government or Congress and GM? No, there's not. Once, by the way, the meddling occurred at the front end, saying, look, all the stakeholders, in order to avoid liquidation, if you want us to put taxpayers' money into this, prove to us you have a workable plan. So that's what they did. GM cut out product lines that were redundant. GM uh, began to base their, their, their production models on a 10 million vehicles being sold a year, not 16 million. They got realistic. Everybody sacrificed, labor, uh, um, debt holders, uh, uh, the company itself. And now they have a company that will be coming out of bankruptcy, I predict, within the next several months that will be able to compete.